Over the past several years, 3D printing technology has gotten better and cheaper, leading to more and more people getting into 3D printing. This has led to a flood of companies and models of printers hitting the market. It's getting difficult to choose the right printer for your needs. However, Creality has been in the business of making and selling 3D printers for over eight years, and their Ender series is one of the best-selling 3D printers there is, with good reason. Their Ender 3 and Ender 5 printers are workhorses and meet the needs of the occasional hobbyist to full production printing farms. With that said, even the Ender 3 that's been a pretty solid choice for most people looking to get into 3D design and printing or experienced printers looking to scale up their production is rife with different versions, making selecting the right model of just an Ender 3 more difficult. For example, Creality sent me their new Ender 3 V2 Neo, which is different than the Ender 3 V2 or the Ender 3 S1 or S1 Pro, but still based on the Ender 3. So what makes this printer different? How easy is it to assemble, set up and use? And what's the print quality like? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and I'm not a 3D printing guru. I am an engineer and a maker, and a 3D printer is nothing more than a tool to me. No different than my table saw, drill press, or electric screwdriver. My primary concern is how easy is it to use and how well does it perform its intended function. Secondarily, what additional features does it have that make the job better, faster, or easier to do, and what's the value? That's how I'll be assessing this Creality Ender 3 V2 Neo. The plan today was to unbox and assemble it, but as you see, it's already assembled. That's because while the provided user manual was not great, it's a little too small for my old eyes, but on the included SD card is both a PDF version of the manual and a well-produced assembly and setup video. So there's no need for me to recreate that wheel. Instead, I'll take you through some of the finer points of the assembly and more clearly narrate the setup and leveling process so we can finally knock out a few prints. Along the way, we'll check out the printer's tools and features, how well they contribute to the overall performance, and ultimately, if the printer is a good value at the $300 price point. To start, the printer was well packed in a couple layers of open cell foam and appears to be very well protected for shipping. There is a cable that connects the gantry to the print bed, so don't just rip the gantry out of the box or you're in for a bad day. There are a lot of small parts, tools, and accessories, however the printer is broken down into four main components. The base frame package, the gantry frame, the spool holder, and the display assembly. The printer does come with all the tools needed for assembly, and assembly was very easy. Just a few bolts to attach each of the components. The wiring was all clearly labeled, so just follow the video and plug all the right cables into the right connectors. Finally, before you plug the printer into an outlet, make sure the voltage is properly selected for your region. Once the printer is assembled, there are a few adjustments that need to be made, and this is where the manual and video start to fall apart. The print bed and gantry are belt driven and move along rails on rollers. We want to make sure those rollers and belts are properly adjusted. Not too loose, not too tight. This printer didn't need any of the rollers adjusted. The gantry arm and the print bed move freely without getting hung up on the rail and there was no wiggle indicating a loose roller. If any of that were not true, then you can adjust the rollers as demonstrated in the video. There are also two belt tensioners, here and here, and I did have to tighten the bed belt just a little. You just want to turn the wheel until the belt is just snug. Not too tight or the bed starts to vibrate a little, and not too loose or the bed gets a jerky motion. You should be able to move the bed and print head back and forth easily with just a little bit of resistance. Now that it's all assembled, I need to level the bed. And again, the instructions made this process out to be more complicated than it has to be. One of the upgrades on the Neo is the auto leveler. However, that just fine tunes the leveling. I just pulled this out of a box that was shipped from China. So before I auto level the bed, I'm gonna manually level it to get it close. To do that, I need to power it on and use the control knob to select the control menu, scroll to reset configuration and click to reset the printer. 
Now go back and select the prepare menu and select auto home. This will move the print head to the center of the print bed. Now it's time to grab a piece of regular printer paper, slide it onto the print bed under the nozzle. Now select the move menu and scroll down to the Z axis. Click to select and then dial it down to zero. Go back to the previous menu and select Z offset. You wanna lower or raise the offset until the nozzle just touches the paper so the paper can still slide between the nozzle and the bed with just a little friction. I think of it like if the nozzle was a number two pencil, it would draw a very light line on the paper. Once the Z offset is set, scroll up to and select disable stepper. This will unlock the gantry and print bed so you can move it manually. We have to adjust the four corners of the print bed so you have the same light touch on the paper that we have in the home position. So leaving the paper on the print bed, move the print head to a corner and using the wheel under the print bed, raise or lower the bed until you have the right friction on the paper. Turning the wheel clockwise raises the bed, counterclockwise lowers it. You're gonna do this for all four corners and then go back and do it again. As you move one corner, it'll affect the other corners. I had to go around three times to get it level. Once you've manually leveled the bed, now you can auto level it. To do this, again, select auto home, then move the Z axis down to the zero position. And again, select Z offset and adjust it to get the right friction on the paper. Your Z offset number will probably be different than the first time, but that's okay because the auto leveling process will compensate for the variations across the entire print bed. Go back to the main menu and select leveling and the printer will measure 16 points, storing that info to compensate for any tiny variations across the print surface. The manual leveling you should only have to do on the initial setup and if you physically move the printer at any point. The auto leveling you should do each time you start the printer up before a print. For best results, you can preheat the bed and nozzle before auto leveling to account for the normal thermal expansion of the components. Once the leveling process is complete, it's time to load the filament and Creality also sent me a spool of their own branded PLA in matte black, so I'll be testing this out. Loading it is pretty simple. First, preheat the bed and nozzle. I'll send the print head to the home position and raise it up to allow room for the filament to ooze out. Hang the spool on the spool holder and on the side of the extruder, there's a small hole. That's where you feed in the filament. And by squeezing the lever here, you can manually feed the filament through the Bosen extruder to the nozzle and continue to push it through until the new black filament smoothly exits the nozzle. You can see that there's some white PLA being cleared out of the hot end, I assume from the factory testing that was done. Along with the auto leveler, the all metal extruder is another upgrade the Neo gets over the standard V2 and should provide more smooth and consistent filament extrusion during the print process. Now that the filament's in, it's time to print. So I've inserted the SD card that came with the printer and on it there are two samples, a little bunny and a benchy. And another upgrade on the Neo is you can see the 3D model on the display. However, I also added a couple of models to the card that I sliced in Cura, and these models don't show up on the display. There's just the default Creality character placeholder. I assume I have to use the Creality slicer to get the image, but I'm more familiar with Cura, so I'm gonna stick with that. For the first print, I'll select Benchy and I'll click print and the printer does its thing and it printed out the model in about an hour and a half. And the final print came out pretty good. I didn't slice it myself, so I don't know what the settings were. There is one small area on Benchy's hull that's a little rough and the arch here is not as smooth as it could be, but overall not bad. Now, I also printed a chep cube that I did slice myself in Cura with a layer height of 0.12 millimeters and I tweaked some other settings that I'll put up on the screen here. And this print came out great. The Creality filament is very nice looking and the layer lines are barely visible. Super smooth. All the text is sharp and clear and the cube measures from a perfect 20 millimeters on its best side to just 19.95 on the worst. So just a 0.25% variation on a PLA print is excellent. I also printed an SSD camera mount that I designed in Fusion 360 and printed using the same settings I did for the Chep Cube. The print took about six hours 
and now is a good time to show you the final upgrade you get with the Neo, the removable flexible print service. Once the print is done, you can just pull off the magnetic print tray, let it cool for a few minutes, and then flex it to pop the print off. This is a preference thing. I know a lot of people like glass print beds, but I like these magnetic ones. Anyway, the important part is my SSD mount wasn't usable. Now, this is a filament issue, not a printer issue. A lot of matte PLA filaments have poor layer adhesion, so are fine for solid objects, but not ideally suited for practical prints, like my SSD mount that split in several places. Now, I did reprint it using a generic non-matte PLA, and it came out perfect and usable. In the end, what does and doesn't the extra $50 spent over the Ender 3 V2 get you? Well, what it doesn't get is any significant upgrades in hardware. The power supply, driver, stepper motors, hot end, gantry, all the same. The printer isn't any faster or quieter, although I will see this printer is very quiet. The cooling fan is the only thing you can hear. The drivers and stepper motors are virtually silent. What you do get, the all metal extruder, the CR touch leveler, and the magnetic print bed. Considering just adding a BL touch leveler to a V2 would cost you about $40, I consider that a pretty good deal. This is one of the reasons I really like Creality. They take cues from their customer community and apply it to their product. These are the types of upgrades people are putting on their Ender 3s, and now you can just buy the Neo with all those upgrades already installed. So although there are printers that apply these features better, like one-step auto leveling without the need to first manually level the bed, they also come with much bigger price tags. So let's apply my criteria. It is extremely easy to use despite the leveling process. I went from the printer in the box to printing a model in 15 minutes. The final products were good, so it performs its intended function well. And secondarily, the additional features I get like just a one-click solution for leveling before I start a print and the flexible print surface that keeps me from needing to use something like this, which will prolong the life of the bed. Those definitely provide added value. But what about overall value? Well, the Ender 3 V2 at $250 has been the top recommendation for people looking to get into 3D printing. And considering everything I just mentioned, I think at $300, the Ender 3 V2 Neo is an even better value and therefore the new top choice for beginner 3D printing hobbyists or even a good choice to stock a print farm. But that's my point of view. What do y'all think about the upgrades Creality ended to the Ender 3 V2? Worth the price increase or not? Let us know in the comments. While you're there, be sure to hit that like and maybe consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.